Let's begin by uh, the new multi rules. Normally speaking, we were using before the cursor rules uh, and putting all the rules here, but this is going to get deprecated and the new rules are under settings and under rules. And that is what we are going to be exploring. As you know, the user rules, previously called as rules for AI, is uh, what you can put in here. Uh, I usually put stuff in here, which relates to all my projects, like kind of like meta rules. And this is uh, actually re reflected in all all of the uh, all the uh, requests that you sent to cursor. And that cursor rules file was being sent to all the requests that are being made to cursor as well. But project rules is a bit different. So project rules, uh, specific rules that help the AI understand your code base, follow your project's conventions. They can be automatically included or fetched by an agent. These are synced to your code base. Uh, so let's start by adding a rule. Uh, when you click on that, it's asking for a name. So let's just make it a general rule. We're just going to give it a name. I'm going to go ahead and delete the dot .cursor rules file because as we said, this dot .cursor rules file will be deprecated. So in the future, we won't be using that anymore. Now you may you may have a question that well, what if I want to create a rule file that I want all my uh, requests to take into account? To do that, see, we did generate the general rule, right? And when a new rule is generated, it's created under dot .cursor rules and rules folder. Uh, you can actually make this a general rule by clicking on this uh, global button, this uh, world icon right here. When you click on this, then this rule will be taken into account with every request. Essentially, we, after we click on this global, this became our dot .cursor rules file, essentially. You can have multiple rules that, uh, that, that can always apply. But usually speaking, when we generate multiple rules, and if you don't click on the global rules, then the agent will decide uh, whether to include that rule for that request or not. So when we, uh, once you create a rule, there is a description. It says here that the agent can see this description and decide to read the rule, full rule if it wants to. If no description is provided, we will only use the attached rules below. So uh, you want to pretty much cursor today on Twitter said that always use the description. Uh, and we will use, we current, because we made this global, though we don't have to use a description, but we can say general rules for every request. You can just say that. Now there's also auto attach here based on the file extension. It says here that when you specify file patterns here, such as star.py, this rule will automatically be included in AI responses for files matching those patterns. So essentially, we can say here like something like star.txt, which will mean that anytime the agent is dealing with a txt file, anytime the agent is dealing with a txt file, it will actually read this rule. So this is the description for the rule. This is whether if you want it to this rule to be attached when dealing with certain files. And I'm actually not going to specify any particular file because this is going to be our global rule. And now you just write your rule content here. These are your rules and instructions that matter for this particular rule file. Uh, you can also refer to files here using at, uh, and we only have the rule itself, so we can only refer to that. But uh, just keep in mind that you can. So for example, we can type here, let's begin by saying, Start every response by saying hi, uh, hi there. Let's see if this is actually going to work. Let's do this. All right, so now that we have this rule and we want to remove this rule, so it doesn't have any, we don't want to give it as an explicit context. So let's just say, um, what can you do? Let's just ask it a question, and we are in the agent mode. See, it said hi there immediately. So uh, it is taking into account this rule. So, but this is a global rule, right? You can put in here whatever you'd like. But let's make another rule. Go to settings under rules. Let's add another rule. Let's call this the emoji rule. Uh, okay, I didn't write this correctly, but it doesn't matter. 
And here, let's specify .txt here, meaning this rule will take effect anytime X files are being uh, manipulated. Let's say uh, each, uh, each time you are writing a text file, started, for some reason, keeps jumping up here. See, it also, there must be a bug or something. Start it with a smiley. Keeps uh, jumping over here for some reason. Let's just put dot, dot, dot here. Maybe that's why, because it's empty. It wants me to fill in the description, maybe. That's why. With a smiley. Oh, that's not it. That's kind of annoying. Emoji. Okay. So we only, we only said that, uh, so we didn't give it a description. Let's actually delete this. But we have said that here, uh, this rule will be, let's say, invoke every time we're dealing with a text file. And we said each time you're writing a text file, start it with a, a smiley face emoji. Let's create a new uh, composer and uh, just with the agent. And let's say, write a haiku about AI to a text file. Let's see what happens. Okay, see, it did not take this emoji rule into account. Let's see what happens. Hmm, it did not. Although we did say that it should apply to uh, all TXT files. That is interesting. Uh, why, let's ask it, why did you not look at the rule? So this is something I wanted to talk about anyway. Yeah, it says, I, I apologize not following the uh, rule. So this is something I noticed sometimes. Okay, so the thing is, these rule files uh, have to go by the, either the uh, file attachment strategy or the description strategy. Uh, and it, it didn't work this time. Uh, maybe this is a bug. Maybe this will get fixed. It should have automatically uh, looked at this rule before writing a TXT file. That is, if I understand it correctly, let's... Maybe we didn't have to put the star. Let's try it again by going to the beginning. Yeah, it still didn't. Uh, so this, this didn't work, but th this should work. Maybe there's a little bug there. I'm sure they'll, that'll get fixed. But normally, let's remove the file extension then. And we can actually give it a description. Uh, we can say every time you are dealing, let, let's say, I'm going to use transcription. Use this rule each time you're dealing with a text file. Okay. So now let's try it again. I'm going to go back to the beginning. Yeah, it still didn't hear it. Uh, I wonder why. Let's, let's create a new composer. Let's remove this emoji rule. We don't want to explicitly refer to it and say, write a haiku to a .ai to a txt file. Okay, see, it's not taking this into account. Uh, I'm not sure why uh, it should, but it didn't. And this is something I wanted to talk about anyway. So we can, and, and it, each of my earlier attempts is actually did, with the exception of uh, once or twice. So the idea is that this description should give it clue whether to use this rule or not. So these rules are not set in stone unless, like in our general rule, we have clicked on this global icon right here. These are uh, rules that are in the background that the agent may decide to pick up. So you can have 10 rules, for example, which we'll add another one shortly. And only if the agent deems that, that rule necessary, it will read the rule and, and apply it. And in this case, it didn't. Let's switch back to Sonnet 3.5. Let's try this again. Okay, you know what? It's not doing it. Let me, my cursor was having a bit of a problem. So maybe let me restart my cursor just to see if that was the problem. And let's close these. We have our rule. Let's create a new window. 
write a haiku about AI in a txt file. Yeah, it's still not picking up the rule, but it should. Uh, that's the idea. If there's any small bugs, maybe there is a bug in this particular version. I'm sure they'll they'll update it. Uh, yeah, we can attach it to the context. We, if we do that, it'll work, but we are not supposed to, right? This is supposed to be auto-picked up by, uh, by a way of uh, description. So now it put, it, it put the um, emoji, but you can refer to it. Yes, that's right. Actually, that's a good point. You can refer to any one of these rules by manually here, and, and you can choose to do that. But the idea is that they should be auto picked by the agent. Maybe let's say that txt file. Use this rule each time you're dealing. Every time, let's say every time you're dealing with. So this uh, we are not attaching it. Let's go back to three point seven. Yeah, see it picked it up. So maybe the description needs to be more uh, solid. We did say text file, but when we said .txt, it picked it up and it added that emoji. So this is the main idea. Let's go ahead and create another rule. Go to settings, rules, add a new rule. Let's say this will be OpenAI uh, pricing rule. Let's just say that. And here we're going to describe, use this each time OpenAI is mentioned in the user query. So these descriptions are pretty open-ended uh, and you know, you'd know you have to kind of uh, play around with it, uh, find the right description for your task. So here's the new model page in uh, OpenAI. So you can, you can be obviously putting in the rules some kind of documentation or something like that. For simplicity, I'm just going to grab all the information that is presented here uh, and put it put it here, just paste it. So this is just some specs on 405 API, like context window, things like that. So now let's create a new one. We don't want to explicitly refer to it just to see if it'll pick it up. Let's say, what is the input price for OpenAI GPT 4.5? Let's just say that. We did mention OpenAI. See, it picked up the rule. And now, now it's answering based on this context. So that's good. Uh, so that's the whole idea. So what happened here is that, let's review. General rule, we selected as global. So this applied. And it did say that. See, it started as response is high there. The emoji rule didn't apply because it only picked up the OpenAI pricing rule, which, uh, and using this context, it answered our question. So this is the main idea behind uh, cursor multi-rules. Uh, you can have as many as you like, and you can refer to them here. If you need to by uh, using at, for example, you can refer to the OpenAI pricing rule. And also, but the main idea, like we said, is that agent decides to, whether to use these rules or not. And just to recap, it uses this auto attach functionality, which we couldn't get working. For example, you can say .txt, and it should be applied to. Uh, every time text files are being modified, that's my understanding. You can read this information here. Or you can give it a description, and this agent uses this description whether to use this rule or not. So your description matters here. And then the right here, whatever you put here are your rules. And you can also refer to files here as well. I think pretty soon you'll be able to refer to folders as well. And maybe you can already. I'm not sure. So this is pretty much it on the rules.